Dr. Sheldon has uh, is alumnus of Bethany Bible University, uh, Baptist uh, Bethany University, and he earned a Bachelor of Science degree in music. Dr. Smoke. He also holds a Master of Arts degree in Biblical Literature uh, from the Assemblies of God Theological Seminary in Springfield, Missouri. He has a DD degree from Northwestern University, and he's studying on a, another doctor's degree. His career has been f uh, focused primarily on ministry within the Fellowship of the Assemblies of God, the organization in which he holds ministerial credentials. Licensed in 1969, ordained in 1979, he has served as Minister of Music in his last church before he went to Bethany was a congregation in Oregon where he was a senior pastor for 28 years and the church grew from 900 to over 1300 during that period of time. He has served in education in many different areas. His beautiful wife is with him. His wife of 45 years, Margaret, and the father of two children, and the proud grandfather of three granddaughters, a published author, a gifted speaker, a music enthusiast, and a wannabe golfer. Dr. Sheldon returns, uh, uh, comes to be with us to bring us our commencement address. And I have been told by other people that he is truly an outstanding speaker and a man who loves the Lord Jesus Christ. Please greet Dr. Sheldon. I, I feel like I should pray, one, because I enjoyed the hyperbole uh, that Dr. Wagner has given me. I'm not sure I'm worthy of all of that. And two, that I should pray that he said such lies about me. <laughs> but indeed, uh, I have enjoyed my brief acquaintance with your president uh, today, arriving a little bit early. We've had the thrill to uh, meet Dr. Tallman, and Dr. Davis, and many of your faculty members and some of your students. It's been a joy for my wife and I to be with you today. We actually met at Bethany where I did my undergraduate work in the 60s, so you know where you have a little, yeah. <laughs> Margaret, would you stand and let these friends greet you, please? <laughs> Administration, faculty, staff, members of uh, the board of the school, parents, friends, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2011. I'm thrilled to be with you today. Uh, each of our lives um, accentuate moments uh, that we might call milestones, I suppose. Uh, the day we're born, the day we take our first steps, the day we enter the infamous world of kindergarten. For we who were older, it was first grade. It was not such a thing. The day that we made the Little League team or had our first piano recital. And then, of course, the day that we left elementary school and entered middle school and on to high school. And maybe there are other moments in your life that you reflect upon and smile as you enjoy the thought of your first date, or maybe the day you got your driver's license, or some other a moment of, uh, well, exhilaration for you, maybe fear for your parents, I don't know. Of course, there were special birthdays along the way. And maybe you remember the next big event in your life, for those of you a little older, maybe the day you were engaged, or the day you joined the armed services, or the day that you got married, the day you received your first job. For those of us who are believers in Jesus Christ, the day that we accepted Him as our Lord and Savior, and He changed our lives forever. Amen? Amen. I'm Pentecostal, so you have to expect that, all right? <laughs> but for you, the members of the class of 2011, this day, will always live in your memory the day you graduated from Olivet University. Today you complete a chapter while you instantaneously begin another. The journey upon which you embarked when you entered Olivet University has undoubtedly marked you significantly as your life has been dramatically changed. Not only have you uh, grown in a chosen discipline, but you also have uh, come to understand different peoples and cultures and thought processes. 
You are not the same person you were when you first entered the doors of this institution. Today, your capacities and your capabilities have been dramatically increased. Your vision is clearer, your focus is sharper, your beliefs are solidified, and your passion has been magnified. You have been stretched, tested, challenged, and proven. And today, you are rewarded with the fruit of your labor. Yet the diploma you are about to receive will not guarantee you success. It only grants you a key in which you, with which you may unlock the door of the future that God has for you. Be sure you insert the key and turn it in the right direction so that you may realize all that God has ordained for you and the multiplied blessings that His storehouse holds for your reception. As parents and friends, members of this university have gathered today to congratulate you and honor you on your accomplishments, I want to add my personal expression of commendation to you today for this monumental occasion. And it is monumental. There are many, many people in our world who will never begin to even think the thoughts that you now take for granted as a college graduate. God has entrusted you with much. I know you will be good stewards of the same. This planet is waiting for you. Your infusion of brilliance, creativity, innovation, determination, commitment, and compassion. It will be uh, impacted dramatically. It will be altered. It will be advanced. Because you've chosen to be a participant rather than a spectator. You've chosen to be a contributor rather than merely a consumer. Thank you for the talent you will lend, the expertise you will offer, the love and respect you will exhibit, and the character and qualities you will emulate. May the blessing and favor of our Almighty God be evident in your life every day and through your life to every person you encounter. This moment, this significant threshold, presents so many possibilities and lends itself to so much contemplation, supposition, and imagination. The journey upon which you're about to embark, this new chapter in your life, will be greatly enhanced with the simple perspective I've chosen to offer you today. On this day of celebration and exaltation, exhilaration, I want you to think just for a moment about the fact that though you have started strong, filled with energy and promise, that you are the only one who can determine how well you will finish. Parenthetically, I insert this in my notes today without it being written. Some of the most impacting words that I have ever read in my entire life come to us from the Gospels. When on the cross, our Savior, amid the agony and pain, amid the mockery of the crowd, amid the perplexity of his disciples, said it is finished. I wonder how many human beings have been at the threshold of death and have been able to say, it is finished. Most face the moment with regrets desires to do something that was yet to be finished. But like the Apostle Paul, I challenge you to say, I fought a good fight. I finished the course. I did it. When your life comes to that moment, may you too know you have finished well. It's to that idea I would like to draw your attention for a few moments before you receive the diploma, and thank you, because if they were receiving their diploma first, they wouldn't be listening to me at all. I know that, so I appreciate the sequence here. Let me tell you a personal experience, if I may, to set up a story, an experience from my youth. I was never a great athlete. I wanted to be an athlete. I dreamed of playing second base for the New York Yankees, and I played baseball every day, every waking hour of my existence. It was a problem for me because I started wearing glasses at the age of four. I was far-sighted and had a cross-left eye. 
God has intervened in my eye situation, for which I'm grateful. But um, it did create some problems for me. Um, a pitch that was high and inside was very difficult for me to identify whether it was a curveball or a fastball. Usually it was only after it hit me that I realized exactly what the pitch had been. Uh, I had to give up my dreams of playing professional baseball, and I played other sports in high school. I was never a great athlete, I have to admit that, but I was an average athlete with baseball being my uh, primary, um, uh, well, um, <laughs> desire. <I'll just laughs> admit that. My senior year, I chose not to play sports because I bought a car uh, my junior summer, and my father had a rule, you buy a car, you pay for it. And uh, so I was working every day after school my senior year. I will tell you that had I to do it over again, I would have left the car and played sports my senior year. All that to say there was one sporting event that I entered my senior year, and I need to set the stage so you'll understand why I ended up there. It was in track and field, and that was not my... Um, <laughs> was not my gifting. I tried to be a pole vaulter my freshman year. Uh, I think I cleared a gum wrapper one time, I'm not sure. I was sitting in a class, a science class if I remember right, and uh, a girl walked down the aisle, headed somewhere, and it was my nature to be somewhat sanguine and to be, well at least to, to attempt to be humorous. I said something that I thought was funny, and the teacher thought it to be otherwise. <laughs> Asked me to stay after class, and the retribution that was offered was my ability to choose the punishment I would receive. I was to write a 5,000 word essay or to run the mile in the final meet of the track season at the county meet. There had been several injuries in the team and the coach, who was the teacher, desired to fill some empty slots. Well, being 17, I decided that running a mile was a lot easier than writing a 5,000 word essay. So I immediately chose and began to train with the uh, track team. The day of the meet came, and I was ready. And as uh, the gun sounded and I left the blocks, uh, the rabbits immediately set the pace, but I was too smart to know that that was not what I needed to do. So hold your pace. They'll come back to you. By the third lap, I was leading and feeling very good about myself. <laughs> This is not hard at all. Uh, as we began the fourth lap, things began to change rather dramatically. And uh, my fellow runners were um, moving past me rather swiftly. And I was feeling like I'd been run over by a truck, to be really honest with you. I had uh, been expended of all my energies, and I was struggling to stay afloat. There were eight runners in that particular uh, heat, and uh, two of them dropped out. I beat one. Finished fifth, but I finished. I was very grateful that I had finished. Although in that moment I probably thought, I think I should have written the essay. 